Galnet News, your galaxy in focus. 31st of May, 3301. In today's news, a vote of no confidence in Federal Congress. The Federal Transport Safety Administration finds Starship One explosion a tragic accident. Angelis Imperial CEO steps down and Marks and Space Tours in passenger safety controversy. Our top story today, Shadow President Zachary Hudson has called for a vote of no confidence. Shadow President Hudson has continued his criticism of Halsey's administration, finally moving to the feared vote of no confidence. In his address to Congress, Shadow President Hudson has made it clear the situation needs a resolution. He said, These are uncertain times, and, with no disrespect to Yasmina's memory, we need to put an end to this weak administration and bring our beloved Federation back on track. We cannot allow ourselves the luxury of wallowing in this state of horrendous disarray for even a moment longer. Had Yasmina returned, it would have made no difference. She was away trying to raise support from the frontier as she knew this vote of no confidence was coming. I call for it now. Let's get it out of the way and move on, here on Mars and throughout the Federation. We are not some imperial dynasty. We do not allow the whims of our dead to dictate terms to the living. As such, in her absence, and without any ill intent towards Secretary Winters, I am issuing a call for a vote of no confidence against the current administration. And following the Shadow President's call to have Congress issue a vote of no confidence, Acting President Felicia Winters held a press conference outside Congress to address the Shadow President's concerns about the future. She said, Let me start by saying how truly saddened I am by the loss of my long-term friend, Yasmina. I know that were she here instead of me, she would be deeply disappointed with the fear-mongering being bandied about by members of the opposition. Nevertheless, we have to bow to process. In order to allow a right and proper number of representatives from the frontier worlds to attend, Congress will meet on Monday to formally vote on the future of the Federation. Should I be chosen to continue to serve, I promise you, you will get the kind of president that you deserve. The Shadow President's motion has now been accepted, and the vote has been scheduled to take place on Monday afternoon. According to historic procedure, if a vote of no confidence in the incumbent president succeeds, then the Shadow President gets the chance to form an administration, which in turn is put to a vote. If this fails, then a full congressional election is triggered. The Shadow President succeeding in these circumstances is not unheard of, but fairly rare. The last occasion was when the increasingly unpopular Eugene Cooper was ousted by the charismatic Antonia Madison in 3264, following a mid-term vote of no confidence. Some more on the fate of Starship One now. It has now been five days since Starship One lost contact, and the search and rescue teams have yet to find any trace of the missing ship or her crew. Lieutenant Barringer of the Federal Transport Safety Administration made the following statement. Starship One's disappearance appears to have been caused by a major malfunction in the frameshift drive safety systems. It looks like there was a major power surge, followed by four separate system failures in quick succession, according to the data we have, resulting in a catastrophic explosion. We do not believe this explosion would have been survivable by anyone on board. The FTSA has seen each of these failures in commercial and military hyperdrives in the last few years, but each one has resulted in the drive shutting down and the ship failing to enter hyperspace. There are strong similarities with the loss of the Highliner Antares in 3251, but since then we have many more safety systems designed to prevent such failures. At the moment it looks like this was a terribly unlucky tragic accident. We have not found any evidence of tampering, and all the systems pass their automated pre-flight checks. Our condolences go out to the loved ones of those lost. In Empire news, the CEO of Empire organization Angeli Imperial, Commander de Morgs, has stepped down from his position at the organization. In a statement made to press, Commander de Morgs said, As many of you are aware, the Angeli Imperial was entrusted to my control in December of last year. Since that time I have overseen major growth and incredible success. It has been my honor to lead you and work alongside you in both peacetime and the inevitable wars that have come our way. It is time for me to step aside and appoint a more appropriate leader. 
Those that have worked and flown alongside me know it is not my style nor desire to remain in an office conducting more administrative, yet equally important, day-to-day -day tasks. It has led to small but sometimes costly mistakes. I hold my hands up to those and accept that they are my fault alone. The position of CEO at Angeli Imperial will be taken up by Argon Armrend, who was delayed in his arrival at the organization's home system of Wangal after a pirate attack, although he is believed to have escaped unscathed. Angeli Imperial were instrumental in the takeover of collapsing Wangal Energy Partners in January last year, who were facing stiff opposition from rivals Purple Federal Organization. Angeli Imperial stepped in at Vries Orbital to oversee the recovery of Wangal Energy Partners and now hold a key position in the Wangal system. No statement has yet been made on the future of Angeli Imperial from new CEO Argon Armrend. Space Tourism Agency Marks and Space Tours has come in for criticism from a number of passengers after a scheduled Orca tour went badly wrong. One high-profile passenger, Baroness Melissa Fitzpatrick, wrote an open letter of complaint to the organisation in which she described the terrifying voyage. She writes, As soon as you undocked from the landing pad, you slammed the ship to full speed within a congested station. Who could forget that horrendous screeching as you grinded across the railings on exit? The seatbelt indicator only gave us half a second before we were thrown out of our seats. My son and I noticed our body shapes embedded into the seats when we got off. On two occasions, your actions have managed to cover the passenger cabin with unfinished food and wine, which, I must say, was excellent. If only I had been able to taste it before the smoked salmon went flying into my face not to mention the 60,000 credit dress you spilled wine all over. We thank the Emperor we are still alive. Don't bother contacting me again for any offers or deals. I'm simply sick of this company and the awful pilots they hire. Smoked salmon is an ancient dish made by preserving the flesh of an earth-based river tributary fish through a smoking process and is considered a delicacy in many parts of the galaxy. Marks and Space Tours were not available for comment. That's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.